So, hello, my, my name is Jello, and welcome to East of Open Felgano. So, today I'm going to be running the very easy any percent. So, I'm going to start a timer, but we're going to start a countdown. So, three, two, one, and go. So, East of Open Felgano, um, Ado and Dogi have decided the visit Dogi's hometown but they soon find out that there are monsters overrunning the place as you can see we're running on a on the Japanese text which is is actually faster and we're also using the steam version Uh, this is just to get us um, used to combat. So we just want to take this out as possible. Let's get that one. Let me the way. And then we have a bit more of some cutscenes to go through. There's about another three minutes of cutscenes to go through. So we find out um, the girl, uh, Elena, if I'm, at least I'm <laughs> pronouncing that right, um, they realise that they're childhood friends. So, um, this game was run two years ago um, on the RPG Limit Break, and there was actually a new glitch discovered after that, which we'll see in this run about 30 minutes through. Go. Be that to the surprise. <laughs> so, with that new glitch discovered, it actually cut, cuts down about 20 minutes off the run. And there's been some sort of small optimizations. Let's just dug in so I can sort of explain a bit more about mechanics and stuff. Okay, so an interesting note about this cutscene. Adol is actually present in this cutscene, but he's actually invisible. And if by some miracle you was able to gain control of Adol, you could actually run up and, and out of one of the loading zones and progress through the story that way, and you'll pretty much be at the end of the game. So now we finally start finally get into the gameplay. <laughs> So we just gotta go talk to a few people and then we can head out to the f main area.
This is mainly to sort of introduce the characters a bit more. So here we learn that the mayor has got trapped in the, the mines and we're asked to go sort of help him. So most of the cutscenes are now the cutscenes are now sort of over at the start of the run. So the movement that I'm using is sort of uh, lunge um, chaining, where I move slightly and then attack, so I lunge, but I keep inputting the lunges. And that's currently the fastest way to move around in sort of long stretches. It's also quite quite useful for attacking things like while on the move. As you can see it makes short works of those little enemies. So we managed to get up here um, just by sort of attacking against the wall which slightly increased our height just enough to be able to make it up there. It gives you sort of an anti-grab almost. Um, attacking against the wall slightly. So I'm just going to be picking off some enemies here and there and just so I can get to the desired level while sort of progressing through. So as I was saying that I got up to that area, I managed to access the pot that you would normally need double jump, which is about 30 minutes into the run before you would cheat, get double jump, but with that small little anti-grab jump, we was able to get up there early. And we, since we've got that amount of gold, we can buy a sword later on. So, he's given us a key for the um, storage house, which is... We'll go back up here. Just a little bit of backtracking. So I'm currently at the desired level. I'm going to try to get a tiny bit more XP. Um, just so that when I do this boss I actually get to a slightly higher level. Important thing to note is when we're sort of um, farming XP from, from mobs, we want to make sure that we keep our XP bonus um, as high as possible. So every time you hit a mob it adds 0 0.01 to the XP multiplier all the way up to 1.99. Yeah, 1 so we can get double the XP. So with this boss, basically just dodge attacks and attack him when he's vulnerable. Um, if you notice that I'm using the last hits in the combo to attack, is you can only hit Daran three times before um, she disappears. So, oh wow, I missed the third hit. So, and the last three hits of Adol's combo actually does more damage. So, to get the maximum amount of damage out, 
we would need to we need to use use those three last slashes. Unfortunately, I missed the one hit, so I got an extra cycle. So now we've got the Ignis bracelet. I believe that's the correct name for it. So now we can start using magic. Now we head back to the way we was originally heading and go deeper into the mine. I'm gonna go for a small little strat here. Not sure how well. No. You can clip through that fence. Um, it's only worth it to try it like once or twice. But any any more than that, you can actually um, do the same in this room, but it's a lot more harder. So getting this uh, ruby actually allows us to charge our magic bit now. Coming useful for the next boss. Actually, I'm at a low level. So, um, Elfail, um, I hope I pronounced that right. Um, so we can only use um, Fire Magic to uh, damage her, and we want to try to get the double hits. Um, there's a chance that when you hit, you can get double the damage for some reason. Uh, I didn't manage properly. That was an alright fight. So now we get the um, first of the statues. Um, there are four in total, but um, with the with the route, we're only going to collect two of them. So there's a, a few more cutscenes here. So this guy's um, Chester. He is actually the brother of, I don't know. And we learn that he's now working for the king. The early part of the run is uh, quite quite cutscene heavy. Oh wow! Um, but once we get about halfway, it starts to speed up quite a bit. Uh, talking to more NPCs to uh, forward the story. So 
So he's um, now explaining to us like he's heard some things in the ruins, and he's gonna ask us to go to sort of investigate. Now, since we got that pot earlier for the um, gold, we can also buy next a new sword. Allow us to do the next uh, boss a little quicker. You can also slightly hog walls um, at a certain angle, and it will sort of increase your speed ever so slightly. So now we're entering the ruins. Most of this is just run through. You go straight to the boss while picking off a few enemies. So we do want to um, farm. Well, I wouldn't say farm. Just pick off enemies on the way to the boss. So pick up this pot. So we have enough gold for later. Two more levels here. So the way the um, lunge attack actually works is when you're in mouse mode, it will sort of auto target onto enemies. So you got to be kind of careful where you where you attack. Okay, so that was the first instance of abusing quick save. So quick save doesn't like reset your horizontal movement. So if you quick save in midair and then jump and then load your quick save, it will still keep your momentum and you can furious technically um, infinitely jump. And it's even more broken when we get double jump. So now we're at the desired level, I want to get a little bit more XP. I don't want to kill stuff though, not that. It's fine. Okay, so now we get to um, fight Chester. So this boss can be quite challenging, um, we have to, have to sort of stay on him, we, we need to keep our um, XP bonus meter, and he's given me a bad pass on already. Yeah, he gave me a bad pass on, unfortunately. Yeah, he's not giving me a good pass in here. Okay. Okay, it's gonna be a better path now. Unfortunately, gave me a bad pattern on the last two attempts. But basically, we want, what you want to do is sort of get him in a corner and sort of lock him there, force him to do his shield, and then force him to do his explosion. When you do three hits on the shield, and then you're able to sort of jump over that and down stab him.
but Chester is quite RNG heavy. So now we, that we see that the king is sort of ordering around, we've been just have been told to dispose of us. <laughs> the classic. This is Sparta. <laughs> Now that we've knocked that, been down, knocked down into a lava zone, we just need to go pick up a sword and we can move on to the next boss. With this being um, very easy to see, the uh, lava doesn't actually do that much damage. We can easily get to the sword. Normally you would supposed to get an item that will make you immune to the lava. There's nothing to really worry about. I believe on Inferno that, that does have a lot of damage and kills you very quickly. So I want to pick up that health and I'm hoping that I take damage on the way. But I'm not gonna... Okay, so here comes a um, little skip. Okay, so that skipped um, the wind bracelet. I can't remember the exact name for it. Um, I'm just going to have to focus for a second. Okay, I have enough gold. So I want to make sure that I have uh, 2,400 gold going into this. I'm not going to reset my health either. Um, so with that with that jump that we did, um, you can do sort of an extended sort of jump slash. So when you jump in the air, you slash two times, let go of your movement, and then press movement again and start slashing. And that gives you sort of extended horizontal, but well, extended movement in the air, allowing you to make that jump. So this boss is a bit of, a bit of an RNG fight. And then the op will take uh, damage here. Oh well, bad time. Give me a bit of a bad pattern, but that's fine. So this is the second and last statue that we're gonna get. I even noticed something that I didn't <laughs> I was supposed to equip that um, when I first got it. So that actually um allows us to use dash, which will now increase our movement quite considerably. Now we have exactly 2,800 
which is what we need for a shield. So Chester knew we survived that fall and knows that we have the two statues. So basically Lena's just confronting him, asking why is he working for the king and doing the this thing. Now the uh, plan is to start finding the other two statues. Like, and now there's a mention of the monsters coming out of the abandoned mine, so we're, we're asked to go check it out. And abandoned mine is where it. What? We'll see abandoned mine for a little bit, and that's when the route changes considerably. So, getting that gold, um, we can now buy an extra shield here. Not talk to the shopkeeper. <laughs> A small cutscene here, um, Alina will give us the um, warp wing that allows us to warp places. So now that we're in a band of mine, we won't see this for too long. I'm gonna try to pick up a few enemies here, just so get a bit of extra XP going into the castle. Okay, this is the, the last cutscene that we're going to see for a little while. So basically it's just telling the story about Janos. And how the four big, the four statues were used to seal seal him away. And it basically tells us where to find the other two.
So now we get the um, ancient tablet. This allows us to uh, double jump. So I don't want to stay in abandoned mines, so I'm going to go straight to the castle. Lit. And first try. <laughs> nice. That's really good. I'm actually going to go for a slightly safer strat here. Um, I'll, I'll explain a little bit of why that worked. This, this part is just a little tricky, so you be Okay, that's good. This room, this next room is a little bit tricky as well. Damn it. No! Ah, uh, nah, it doesn't matter too much. <laughs> wow, I'm... Wow, I got pushed by <laughs> I got pushed by it anyway. Um... <sighs> Come on. I'm just going to say this normally. Okay, we finally got through that. That room can be quite tricky to get through. Especially when you're trying to do it like, sort of, sort of, as fast as possible. So this is where the um, grind actually starts, um, we're going to be killing quite a few of these. <laughs> Until we get up to it. So as I was explaining, the way um, that gate clip works, um, not really fully um, known, but it seems to be something like um, you're colliding with the top corners of the wall by the gate frame, and it's just enough that it clips you through. And I believe there's like two sections to that gate, so you clip straight through the middle of it. But, 
So we're just going to be resetting these mobs for a while. And these can be quite dangerous if you get hit too many times. Which is why that sh the extra shield comes in very handy. And I want to make sure that my EXP multiplier stays at 99. Well, two times at least. And of course we abuse uh, the quick save by placing the quick save near the um, loading zone. So we can easily get back. And it doesn't matter how far we really stray from the um, loading zone. So I only need sort of one more level now. And then we're good to go. However, we need like 600 more gold. Now go. So now we're all good. We can hit that loading zone from the bottom. And um, we're just gonna abuse some quick save jumping to get up here very quickly. Um so quick save is I believe only um, available in the very easy difficulty. Certainly does make the uh, run slightly interesting and takes away a lot of the, um, the platforming elements. So that's the grind over. So this is the uh, family of the king. They kind of been put here for safekeeping almost. I just need to talk to um, kids to get the monkeys. And now we travel back to Redmond so we can do a bit of gear management. So we're going to sell some of the gravel ore that we got. Because for some reason this guy likes Rebel War. And he's going to give us something like 13,000 gold. He also gives us a ring that we're just going to give to this um, the shopkeeper in a second. <laughs> no use to us. So, buy the sword. Break the sword. Break the shield. And now it's boss time. So, Death Valiant is, uh, can be quite the boss. Um, basically, since we only have one magic, we can only certain types of damage during certain phases. And that was a one cycle, which is very good actually. So normally if you don't um, do enough damage to him in that first phase, he will go into his green phase where you can only damage in with the uh, wind magic, which we don't have. And then you have to wait for him to go into his fire phase.
Okay, so... We are also at the um, correct level for... the next boss, so we can just go straight to that. I'm going to try a little trick here. Ah, it didn't work. Basically, um, you can uh, jump through that corner slightly and make it down here, which skips the um, stairs. It doesn't save much time, but it's cool. Another slightly tricky room coming up. I believe this boss name is um, Zelfel or ZZ. Yeah, Z Zelfel. Um, so this boss is quite interesting. There seems to be like a blind spot in its AI, which is over by this um, like gate, and his AI just sort of fails when you stand here. With your attack animation, you can slightly clip out, and his AI will catch up. But he didn't give me any any trouble at all, which is good. Yeah, I got it that time. So, now that we collected all the pieces and put them back together, now I'm not the next area. Debating whether or not to go for this strat. <laughs> I think it saves like two or three seconds. I'm gonna go for it. So we have to pick up this pendant, um, which is you know this pendant. Um, if you try to go in that, ah, oh, missed it. Okay, so these bugs are actually very annoying. They can completely like stun lock you if you're not careful. When there's so many of them as well. So I actually use sort of two control styles. Um, I use mouse for sort of um, like most of my movement. But boss battles and sort of tricky movement, I will use um, sort of just straight up keyboard. So um, we're supposed to give that pendant back to Eleanor, but um, I'm not sure if I want to do that or not. So Eleanor has actually been captured somehow and is in that room above us, but I, I don't really want to, so I'm just going to go up here, jump on this torch, jump over the wall, and yeah, see ya. So <laughs> what we actually did was skip um, a boss and skip a cutscene that you threw the um, captured villagers. Unfortunately, we're not saving the villagers.
So, um, interesting note about this is um, you're actually supposed to have all four of the um, statues placed on the pedestals going up this clock tower. Um, but since we don't have them, the game doesn't really know what to do, so it just opens all the gates. So I... I actually need to do a slight bit grinding here for some reason. I think I might have leveled slightly too far when I was grinding, which isn't a problem. I just need to kill one more thing. Since we've already been in the save room, I can just walk out. So, this boss is uh, quite tricky and is quite RNG dependent. Um, so it's basically just managing the RNG as well as you have to keep attacking him otherwise your um, XP bonus will drop. Which we don't really want happening. Um, I'm going to go for this probably about two times depending if I get it or not. So he's giving me a very bad pattern. Yeah, I'm gonna have to die here. It's actually slightly faster to retry. So I managed to get the strat, which was amazing. So basically what that did was actually allow me to get double the XP as from fighting lower at a lower level. And in turn got a ton of XP which boosts us into the range of like the second to last boss um, level. So there's one uh, long, long cutscene here. So after finding out, um, well, after Chester found out that the king's orders was doing something bad, he kind of just. Asked him why he was doing it. And then we find out. Find out that he was just taking orders from someone else. So, now it's just been knocked out, it's our turn to give it a shot. 
Though, unfortunately, we can't win this fight. You actually need the sword um, that Chester's got to be able to break his shield. Interesting note is, um, if you actually hack in, keep the um, sword in, you can break his shield and kill him up here. But that actually soft, lock, soft locks the game because the game doesn't know what to do since you killed him. So basically, I don't know, it's just saying don't hurt him and so she's being now taken away so we didn't get hurt <laughs> so as I was saying with that gate clip um, before um, what that did actually skip was we, s we skipped the Abandoned Mine boss, which has a um, one, of the, one of the statues, and we skipped um, Eldon, Eldon Mountain, I believe that's the right name for it, um, which skips two bosses as well, as well as the Terror Bracelet. And not having the Terror Bracelet can make some of the later fights um, a lot harder. Like, with that Chester 2 fight, it goes a lot smoother if you have the Terra Bracelet. Since you can just sort of shield through. So now Chester's giving us the, um, I believe it's called the Brave Sword. <laughs> or Ravel Sword. One of those. So, his his W, he's actually been injured somehow. In in a cutscene that you were supposed to get up in the mountain, but since we um well, the cutscene up in the mountain, he actually gets stabbed by Chester. But since we didn't do that cutscene, he just miraculously got hurt. So Dogu just clapped from his wounds. And uh, now we're I'm actually at a slightly lower level, which is a bit unfortunate. If I had a bit more XP before doing Chester 2, that would have um carried over. It means this boss might take a slight bit longer. So we we find out who Dalan is. Three still along. So this boss is extremely weak to fire. Oh wow, I didn't aim properly. So ultimately you want to go for say like a three cycle on this boss. But it's quite hard to do consistently. Okay, so that got me to the level that I needed to be at, which is fine. 
So um, we've just got one more section to do. It's just running through some areas and then the last two bosses. There's, there's also a clash track that you can do here where you sort of trick the game in like placing you under the um, under one of the ramps which skips like a huge section we're gonna be uh, abusing quick quick saving quite a bit in here So, um, the first half was alright, this is the um, second half, which can get quite, quite hectic if you're not careful. Um, like you can get hit by those blue flames, which slowly add up damage. You also can't kill, we can't actually kill some of the um, skeleton enemies because they're undead. And just abuse a quick save by sort of clipping into a bridge slightly. Okay, so I'm gonna abuse. Uh, Quick saving here again. And so we can get over that wall. So walls actually go up a lot higher than what they what they seem. So quick save can just make quick work of those. So now we finally have a rematch with this guy, and we've got the correct sword to fight him. So my overall plan is to take sort of a little bit of damage at the start, just so that it gets my boost. But go up. So I didn't properly explain how boost, boost works. So the way boost works is it charges faster when your um, health is low. So you'll see um, me opting to take damage on certain parts just so I can get that boost charging quicker. And boost allows you to do more damage and take less damage as well. Now he's going to do his suicide attack. Um, basically, you just run away from it, um, and you can actually fail the fight if you get hit by that. I think on my first casual playthrough, I did actually die to that because I wasn't ready for it. So like, finally, I beat the boss, and then I just got sucked in and got blown up. <laughs> so now we're coming up on the. Um, Final boss. Just a little cutscene.
So, um, I believe his name Galavan um, is draining power from Melina um, since she's like descendant of the Janos. But she has the power to awaken Galavan. So now we're gonna fight. So I'm gonna attempt a um, quick strat at the start. Oh, I didn't get it. So he gave me um, ice quite fast. Good pattern. Hope I don't get my boost here. So the classic Zelda and S. Nice purple ball placement. over. So that's not actually time. Um, the time will be coming up um, a about three minutes later. Since there's still um, a bit of gameplay after. So basically Chester is now sacrificing himself to um, put an end to Janos and the island. Yeah, that, that was a very decent run, actually. So we have a tiny bit of small... Um, 
small bit of gameplay here. <laughs> but it's basically just walking. Time will be coming up when I um, leave the actual village. So, it's gonna come up. And time. Yeah, I'd, I'd very much like to thank uh, the people for allowing me to have a chance to show off this game. And this is, honestly, it's my first time doing something like this, so it's a big honour. So Ado is now leaving on another adventure. So yeah, that's East Open Felgana. Thank you everyone for watching. And again, it's been a big honour to run on here.